Hello, my name's Joyce and I live in Newton. I'm going to tell you all about bath time at Peterborough as a child. We didn't have a bathroom at our home at Peterborough. There was water connected to the home, a cold water tap over the kitchen sink, and there was another tap outside by the back door. But the water came from Jamestown and was shocking to drink and was used only in dire emergencies like fire. We relied on rainwater collected in a number of tanks around our property and that was for drinking. After it had been boiled in a very large copper urn located permanently on the kitchen wood stove and the brackish water from our well watered our garden plots. Our family's bath time was Saturday. If we were going to an evening picture show, our baths would be before our evening meal, but if we were staying in, the baths would be after our meal. Saturday was chosen, of course, because we had to be clean to attend church every Sunday morning. Our tin bath was hung up on the wall of the closed-in back veranda, and on Saturdays, most times, while it was a bit on the cool side, the kitchen table would be moved back to make room for the lightweight bath to be placed near the hearth of the fire. The water would be on the stove and then mum would place lovely fresh towels with a flannel, always a cake of pear soap, along with a nail brush, hairbrush and comb on the nearby chair for us girls. And we'd, there'd also be a little bit of powder and a puff. I remember once my grandmother set up some multicoloured bath salts and my little sister got into trouble because she shook the bottle and all the colours mixed into one. <laughs> but the lovely smell of violets lingered. The initial containers of hot and cold water would be part poured into the bath. My little sister would get bath first, then her hair was washed, she'd get dried off in front of the fire, and then if it was <coughs> cool weather we weren't going out, into nighties, and then she would go to her room to wait. And then it was my turn, added warm water, off I'd go after my hair was done and you'd have your hair dried in front of the fire. Then dear old mum would have her turn, but we weren't allowed in, in the room while she had her turn, we had to go into our room. Last in, but with the most amount of water was dad. When he got out finally and got dressed, we girls could all go back into the, could both go back into the kitchen. The bath would be emptied with the contents going onto the garden area nearest the back door, and then the bath would be wiped out and rehung on the back veranda. No water went to waste. If we were staying in in winter, I especially remember the lovely nights when the four of us would sit around warming our feet in the warmth coming out of the oven as we listened to Dad as he read to us, or we'd make up stories about what we could see in the embers of the fire. Inside the oven, our bricks would be getting warmed, so that just before we went to bed, Mum or Dad would wrap them up in newspaper and place them in between the sheets of our bed to warm them up. These nights were also remembered because in winter we would quite often have supper, and that was bread toasted over the hot coals and spread with dripping salt and pepper and tomato sauce with our cups of tea. In summer, the bath was taken down and just placed in the back veranda there, and we'd have our baths there but I can remember it was always warm and slightly humid and you get out of the bath and really need another one. <laughs> During the week, every morning after getting up and every night before going to bed, my sister and I would be topped and tailed. This meant mum giving us a full body wash by getting us to stand in a bowl of warm water while she used the flow on soap. Mum was very particular about personal cleanliness and she and dad also kept clean this way, but I don't think they stood in the bowl. Dad would come home from work covered in coal dust and oil, so she must have had a job keeping him clean. But I, I can remember she, she managed it, but I can remember her chiding him about keeping his fingernails clean and using a nail file on them. So there you go. Thank you. Thank you.